I just wanted to make a video really quickly to let everybody know that I actually was healed from my brain tumor in Lourdes. I found out that I had a brain tumor up at the Mayo Clinic on uh, February 11th, the Feast of Our Lady of Lourdes. And then that night, I actually got to have mass uh, in the chapel of Our Lady of Lords. But joining us right now from Indiana, the home state of most of my family anyway, Father John Hollowell joins us. Good morning to you, Father John. Good morning. Praise be to God, Father. Thank you for your time today. We're really, really grateful that you're on with us today. Let's start with the backstory. We have a, we, we're gonna blaze through this segment faster than we think. You suffered brain cancer, was it two, three, four years ago? Uh, it kind of took the internet by storm at the time. Your homilies were going viral and people were very excited. What is the story? How did you get uh, brain cancer and uh, what did you do? What did you, what did you decide to do when you found out? Yeah, so um, uh, in 2018, I actually prayed um, if it would if it's God's will, uh, uh, if, if I would be willing to suffer uh, for the victims of Catholic clergy sexual abuse. And um, about a month later, I actually had my first seizure uh, from the brain tumor. Uh, it took me a while, uh, my doctors a while, to figure out uh, that it was a brain tumor. Um, but eventually, that led me up to the Mayo Clinic, and the Mayo Clinic is... Uh, was started by some Catholic sisters up there, Franciscan sisters, and the head abbess had a vision of a hospital, and so she went in, Jesus told her to go into town and to find a Dr. Mayo. And so the nurses were the early, um, uh, the, yeah, the sisters were the early nurses at the Mayo Clinic. And so, uh, but long story short, I got the diagnosis of a brain tumor um, on the feast day of Our Lady of Lords in 2020, and then got to have Mass that night in the chapel there at the Mayo Clinic, which is also the chapel of Our Lady of Lourdes. And so, yeah, um, I, I've wow. always felt a, a, a strong connection to uh, Our Lady of Lourdes. What a grace that is. Uh, I'm thinking of St. Therese of Lisieux, St. Padre Pio. St. Padre Pio, when he received a stigmata in the in his uh, the choir loft there, it was specifically because of the sins of priests. He was asked to suffer in reparation for the sins of priests, and he did so for 50 years to the day. That's a hard saying though, Father. Most people can't understand redemptive suffering in the way that the Catholic Church teaches in her tradition and patrimony, can they? Yeah, no. Um, I, I always say that it's one of the most beautiful teachings of the Church, and it's one of the things that separates us from a lot of other even Christian denominations is our understanding of suffering, which comes from First uh, Peter uh, chapter two, I think, verse twenty-two, um, and it says, "Christ suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow." And um, so, uh, Catholics have always understood that to be, you know, basically a literal truth. You know, that if we suffer uh, for uh, as Christ did for other people, then that. Uh, as Christ uh, uh, suffering one for us salvation, we can have some share in the salvation of other people. How close to uh, how? I mean, just how close were you to dying of brain cancer? Here, it's. I mean, I remember seeing videos of you wearing a helmet, even, and your the scars on your head looked very serious, and a lot of people were very, very concerned. So, just how close did you come? Yeah. So I had a, a, about. Uh, two and a half months um, before I left for Lourdes, I had a pretty negative MRI that the tumor was starting to grow back, that it had spread to my pituitary gland, um, even after all the three surgeries and chemo and radiation and everything. So I, I didn't, you know, I went to Lourdes, like, just thinking I was perfectly happy to die, but I was just like, if I was healed there, that that might have some impact on my family and friends who'd fallen away from the church and so forth. And so I went to Lourdes um, uh, this past summer and, um, yeah, w was healed there. So, um, yeah, I, God has more in store for me, I guess. <laughs> Well, I mean, you say that so uh, casually. I was, and I was healed there, brain cancer, and you know, then I got a coffee. You know, I just, like that must have been a pretty monumental experience to to go to Lourdes to. I mean, were you healed through at, right after the bath? I mean, like exactly what was that experience like for you? What what did you feel at the time? What were you thinking at the time? I imagine that the Thanksgiving to God was pretty intense. 
Well, yeah, I, I, un, unfortunately, the trip was so chaotic. Like, I, I, I went last minute, um, and so I didn't even really have time. I, yeah, the, just to give you an insight, the, the, even the day itself when I went to the bath, I told my family I was going to get in at 5 p.m. France time. I went to the bath uh, about 4.30 they said the bath closed at 4:45, so I had to run back, and then they also needed masks, so I had to run back to the hotel, grab a mask, get back in line, just got in, um, and then there's just so much chaos on the trip um, that it didn't even really uh, hit me until a couple of weeks after I got back. And in fact, so I had an MRI about two weeks after I got back from Lourdes, and that was kind of the first time where it sunk in that I, because the MRI showed that there was no tumor. And that um, wow. what was there was uh, scar tissue from the surgeries, and uh, that was really the first time that it sank in that that I was healed uh, at Lourdes. Praise be to God. What did your doctor say? Yeah, I, he, he, uh, he. I don't think he's, he's not a Catholic. Um, I mean, I, my primary care doctor is Catholic, uh, and um, but yeah, the guy that that's been working with me as my oncologist. Uh, you know he. He he traveled to Rome, you know, at some point this past year. I mean, I I, I don't think that he really puts it together. I mean, he hasn't put it together. I don't think because he's got like hundreds of patients. Um, so I I just but he I was getting an MRI every three months, and then now I don't have to get one for another seven months. Um, Glory be to God. In this time that you have been still struggling with brain cancer, going through all of this, um, you know, chemo and this treatment and, and all of the rest, how has that affected your priestly life? I imagine your parish, your parishioners, your family, your friends have all seen this kind of happen before their eyes. And I'm sure they were greatly concerned. But uh, so can you give us a, an idea, a perspective on, on the impact of your priesthood? Yeah, I would say just the, the the cancer, the brain tumor in general, um, got me to uh, got me off of social media, which then led to me being able to focus on my parishioners a lot more. Um, I always thought I was just bad with names, but when I got off social media, I realized I could learn parishioners' names. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, it, it, I, I think it's made me a lot more. Um, you know, present, uh, to my parishioners. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, just uh, focusing a lot more on like, you know, our work, you know, I've preached a lot more, uh, steered away from national issues and international issues and just focused on like our speech and, you know, gossip and how destruct, you know, so often I think we, maybe we're tempted to complain about national politicians and stuff like that. And, and I still do. I mean, I still preach pro-life homilies and everything, but, focused a lot more on like my own speech and gossip and you know the new testament is full of places where our tongues can send us to hell and um and and, and so i've just been preaching a lot more on on those sorts of things um recognizing that that's probably the most one of the biggest things that our, my parishioners struggle with and not so much like the abortion issue um which again i'm i'm avidly pro-life uh, and preach about it but yeah, just I think my homily has been more t tailored towards like what I see going on in my particular communities. Yeah, amen to that. So, is was did you ever? So after Lords, after the healing, did you ever ask yourself why? 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 Why did I get healed? Why don't others get healed? Because not everybody who goes to Lords receives a miraculous healing. Did that question ever enter your mind? And if so, how did you deal with it? Yes, I. Um, it did, uh, but um, I've always told people, you know, as soon as I, well, when I found out and understood that I was healed there, I was like, the greatest blessings from that trip weren't actually not the healing. Um, it was the, the million ways, because the trip was so chaotic and, and hectic, I, 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 there were times I just knew God answered like a million prayers besides the healing. And um, I got to witness the power of God more through those uh, answered prayers than even I would say the healing itself. And I've, 60 minutes did a, uh, a document or a 15 minute segment on Lords, and they were they were interviewing um, they were doing it on a sister who had just, was the most recent miracle. Um, but then they were also interviewing other people who weren't healed, and they were also saying, you know, I, I God helped me even though He didn't cure me of my illness. He helped me with my anger 
and uh, you know all these other stuff, all these other things that I was experiencing about my illness go away. Um, and 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 so I think that's that's the bigger thing that happened to me on the trip as well. Um, I mean, I'm obviously grateful uh, for the healing of whatever God's will, but I I've experienced this power more uh, than in the healing itself. So what would you say, Father, to someone who is suffering quite a bit, but really hasn't come to the point where they can offer that up, where they could embrace that suffering as the cross that Christ has asked them to endure to Calvary? What would you say to that person? Well, Pope John Paul II said, never waste a, a drop of suffering, right? I mean, you're, if, if you're suffering, you might as well offer it up. I mean, like I, that that's crass probably, but, um, you know, I mean, it, it is you you can if you offer it up that helps you and the whoever you're offering it up for right the other option is basically to not offer it up and um to keep it to yourself and then that um you know i guess be bitter about it or something you know um and and, and so it's really a freeing thing um and again it's one of the more beautiful teachings of of catholicism i think so I would, if you're suffering, why not try and offer it up as well? Uh, maybe God will work through that. I mean, I know he will, but you might experience that if you're in that situation that you're describing. How is your energy, Father? Are you, on a scale of 1 to 10, how are you feeling right now? Yeah, um, awesome. Um, yeah, I made some dietary changes during chemo. Um and, um, yeah, I, I feel, uh, in a lot of ways, um, better than I did before, um, uh, the, the cancer and everything. Praise be to God. Father John Hollowell, we're grateful for your time today. Thank you for sharing your miraculous story. We're, we, we give God praise for healing you, and we pray and hope that your testimony, your witness, will affect so many people. Father John Hollowell, God bless you. God love you, and have a great day, sir. God bless you.